Hello, and welcome to this episode of Conscious Design. I'm your host, Ian Peterman, author of the book on Conscious Design. And I'm here with Robin, Conscious Content Creator and Mind Body Connection Advocate. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me. Yes. Great to chat with you here. I uh, wanted to start with a little bit about your journey of how you got into a conscious content creator is a big, big term, but how did you get here? So um, first off, I started, I've always been in that marketing realm and I've always had that type of, you know, content expression type of personality and working in corporate for however long I did, maybe nine years and then venturing into um, helping my husband uh, manage and well, really design from the ground up, um, brand and operate three of his restaurants really, really is what led me to where I am today. Um, you know, being from a third eye view, a partner to him, I realized how we grew too fast, almost too quickly, or we grew too big too quickly rather. And it was so important to really take a step back and look from a third eye view consciously at what was happening so that we could set up systems and maybe flows because a state of a flow is very important to me flows that really made sense so that we could run like clockwork. And with that being said, he didn't necessarily agree with me. <laughs> so one day he said, you know, this isn't working and you need to leave the business because we were bumping heads tremendously because I was trying to help him see, and I'm more of a visionary where he's very much a hard worker, one of the hardest working men I know. But again, he's one of those men who will do, doesn't have the time to do things right the first time, but he has time to do it maybe two or three times. So I learned that if we just took a step back and took our time and really became in alignment with our mind, body, and souls, that it really in the long run is really what is most effective and flow like state. So that's really how I got to where I am because when I did step away, I, I, you know, I was hurt, number one, because it was my husband and I felt too valued. And I had to almost rebuild myself and recreate myself because I had identified with him for so long. So I had to learn about my own self and I had to become in alignment with my own self. And I was always an advocate of yoga, but it wasn't until that point that I really stepped up to the spiritual level. And I realized that through that journey that I was holding a lot in my shoulders and I was holding a lot in my hips and I was holding a lot in my body that was really preventing me and blocking me from consciously thinking. And I really related to what Phil Johnson, your previous podcast guest had mentioned. And it was, you know, we have our emotional intelligence and we have our intellectual intelligence and, and we've been, our brains are what billions of years old biologically. And we're programmed to either fight, flight, or freeze. And when all of this had happened and unraveled and he asked me to step away and I was just lost and didn't know who I was, I really was in that fight mode and I lashed out a lot and I wasn't, I wasn't in a good space. Let's just say that. So when I took that step away <laughs> and I really started to focus on my mind, my body connection and releasing all of that, everything eventually became an alignment and it goes off alignment. It does, but I was allowed to consciously, clearly, and creatively think and recreate myself and my content and my expression and who I was. So that's kind of how I got to where I am. Well, and, and going through a rebranding yourself, right? Refiguring out what you're doing, that's, that's an experience all on its own. And then adding this conscious layer. So now now you work with other people you help other people to go through this process so how did you you went through this process you you figured out how to create more alignment and figure out you know how to align <laughs> the way you should actually be <laughs> right so I, that's that takes a takes some time and effort and then how do you turn that into something that you work with other people how do you how do you do that so, yeah, so, well, first off, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a therapist or any of that sort, but I am a habitual, habitual soul searcher and someone who will try any type of healing modality of any sort on any day at any given time. So a lot of what I have experienced 
And what has worked for me is really what I, you know, either help other people realize or at least offer it to them. And some may not work for them, some may. So, you know, there are different things and I could almost intuitively feel what a client needs at a certain time. So for example, you know, I, I spoke with this really great writer. She's a great creative writer. She's a professor at one of the state colleges and she just has a blockage. You know, she has a blockage because she had, and, and Disney had flown her out to do different things. And, but there was a point where she got pregnant and she couldn't pursue that dream. So she had this blockage, right? So those are things where I sit down with her and we do different type of breath work and diff different type of visualizations. And also another part is I, I'm a huge networker and a huge connector. So that's where I start to pull in my resources and, you know, outsource somebody who is able to help her. Or for example, I have another girl who's a little bit of in, in an identity crisis and doesn't know where she's going with her business either. You know, it's not growing or scaling to the degree or momentum that she likes. And with her, I, I need for her, because she's a little bit of an overachiever, <laughs> to really take a step back and, and accept and acknowledge that not everything is going to accelerate at the rate she wants it to, but at the rate that it's meant to be. And, and how can she learn from that in order to, you know, grow. So, you know, two years ago, three years ago is when I started my business and it really was, I, I feel as though my own experience is what I help other people experience. And like I said, I've been, you know, going through, I've done yoga, I've done Reiki, I've done multiple different breath works. I have done e, e, the tapping, the EFT tapping, and I, and I do all these things and I've created my own toolbox as to what works for me but I experience and I experiment with all of these modalities so that I am able to more easily and consciously direct my clients into what I feel would be fit according to what they would need. If that makes sense. Right. Almost like I'm like, a, I feel like I'm like a, <laughs> a brand building doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I, meet them, I meet them wherever they are along their creative process and help them fill in the gaps to what they need to get to where they want to be. And how, so you, you said you all, you worked in, in corporate marketing, right, for nine years. So that's a pretty, pretty big different <laughs> space than where you're at right now. But how is that, you, know, you also, for from what we've talked about, you know, you work in kind of that marketing branding. So how are you pulling these things together, which, you know, you, usually people don't really think about <laughs> as being in the same box, but they kind of are, right? I mean, branding is branding is so tied into our emotions and how we react to things. So, you know, I, I see it as very connected, but how are you, how do you kind of, what's your view on, on connecting those things together and, and the benefits of, of this pulling this conscious part to the marketing and to, you know, what you talk, like soulful uh, social media, right? So how do you, what's your, what's your pull on that? So I feel as though, everything that we experience in our life is 100,000% for a reason. And I'm a Gemini. My mom has always said, you're a jack of all trades, but master of none. Because I was always experimenting and doing different things and being in the marketing world. I was also, you know, my nine years in corporate, I was also in the marketing. I was also in sales, account management and advertising sales. So mm -hmm. all of that are all, you know, it, it's all very much intermingled and it's all very much connect it like you had said so where i am now is I, I pull and i feel i utilize a lot of those experiences into what i do because today content creation isn't what it used to be and you have to be very fast and it's you know consistent yeah. and continual <laughs> and it's a very fast-paced world today especially the social media world so you know how could i create systems and how can i i you know utilize my sales experience with my account management, which is my, you know, my sales experience. I use a lot of my networking and my personable type of customer service type of capabilities that I've learned throughout that experience. And I pull, you know, my, my, um, that's my sales. And then I pull from maybe my, um, marketing experience, as far as my market, who am I trying to attract? Who do I ideally want to attract? You know, who do I ideally want to work with? And then I'll pull from maybe my account management experiences on how to different tactics on how to handle my clients and be organized and structured. So all of those 
different um, tactics and experiences that I've experienced has really molded me to who I am today. And in addition to my advertising experience, you know, I love that creative aspect of the advertising and being able to infiltrate it into the marketing and things like that. You know, how could they go hand in hand, which is all very much important. Branding to me is actually a different animal. And branding is. is definitely one of the one of the parts of marketing and, you know, product product um, development that I always outsource to really reliable sources, uh, such as yourself when that opportunity comes. And, you know, different companies that I've worked with who I feel, you know, would intuitively connect with some of my clients and branding is definitely a different animal. So it's, that's a gift. And that's something I've never ventured into and something I always outsource. But as far as my own branding, I know who I am now and that's my brand. So when it comes to the visualization of it, I will, you know, I, I just rebranded myself and I really worked with a company. This was prior to meeting you, but I worked with a company um, out of, uh, it's uh, out of Mexico and they're a great company and they really intuitively felt where I was going and who I was. And I'm very happy with it. It's type of that third eye vision type of, you know, right that inner and it's everything. Cause I'm very, very, as you could tell from what I just, you know, explained, I'm very kind of intermixed and, you know, combined a little bit of everything. So you're doing a lot of things you're doing. You have a retreat that you host. I think <laughs> yearly, I think that's coming up now. Um, tell, mm -hmm. share a little bit about all the, all the things that you're doing <laughs> uh, and the different, you know, what are, what are you doing to help people? What are the ways that you're able to help people you know, do better at all this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's, it's yeah, large. Part of it is through my, yeah. Part of it is through my own experience again. So what I've come to notice is that a lot of people, believe it or not, especially women uh, do feel lost at times and, and do, you know, we're so used to and programmed going to the nine to five and working for people, but our soul and our, our inner light isn't necessarily sparked. You know, we're just going through the motions of the everyday. And we know that that's all, all over the place right now, but we can even ignite the spark in our, in our current, you know, situations where we are just as long as we ignite that spark. Like if you're within a corporation and maybe you're not ha happy with the culture, maybe you could be that leader who is empowering people to maybe almost transition to a happier culture or a more productive you know, efficient culture. So, so there's different ways. It's not, you know, if your soul isn't lit up, you need to leave your job. It's not about that. It's how can we find ways to reignite your soul and help you find out who you are and where you want to be and what tools can help you get there. And with that, you know, it became a great passion of mine to help share the great and qualified and brilliant souls and minds that have really helped me to get to where I am today. So I do host a retreat. It's called Spark. It is very intimate and limited to probably 10 attendees. I have five spots left. It is in Zion, Utah, April 27th to May 1st at an amazing, awesome re retreat place, um, East Zion Resort, which is fairly new and they have an East Zion Adventures, um, which is pretty cool too. So it's definitely going to be that yoga intermixed with mindful, mindful practices, intermixed with business and intermixed with challenging experiences to step you out of your comfort zone. So I'm pretty, really, I'm really excited about it. Um, the majority of the people that are coming are coaches who are you know, ready for that next level and ready for that energetic upgrade, because I feel it's very important as coaches and as leaders for us to be around other coaches and leaders who are bringing us up because, you know, it could be energetically draining at times for us to always give, give, give and help, help, help. So this is kind of that oh, restart. <laughs> yeah. That restart, that re-energizing type of experience. And we just actually mapped out the closing ceremony, which is really cool because it's during it's on april 30th which is a partial solar eclipse and in the astrological world that's a, a time you know in the cosmic universe where people recommend usually reflecting on what it what hasn't necessarily worked for you in the past and then mm. to reflect on you know moving forward what could work for you and how you could do what things you could do to improve what hasn't worked for you and you know transition 
So the closing ceremony is pretty radical and I'm really, really, really excited about it. So again, there's five spots open and you could spark with the masters.com is where you can learn more information on that. Awesome. Yeah. Wait, your mic again is choppy. Oh, it is that, is this something that's yearly? It will be. Yes, it will be. This is the oh. first year that I transitioned it into a retreat, but last year was always an in-person event at a venue, but this year it's just oh, okay. a retreat felt, felt more, it felt right to me. So oh, it's Zion, going to be. Zion is lovely. I've been there. We enjoy, we enjoy Zion quite a bit. So yeah. It's a place to visit. Yeah. I'll have to pick your brain. There's a couple <laughs> of things. Did you go pioneering while you were there? Yeah, we we want to go. We want to go again. We just did hiking there. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Another thing that I wanted to talk to you about that I thought was pretty cool is that I love working with, you know, the people who are conscious and helping those conscious coaches because those coaches are the ones that are really going to make a difference in the world. You know, the Reiki masters, the energy healers, the people who are really motivating others and helping people heal so that they could up level themselves and create better communities. And those are the ones really the catalysts, the community catalysts are the ones that I'm really passionate about helping. And as a matter of fact, I just picked up this and you would appreciate this. I just picked up this account um, in Philadelphia and it's a commercial building um, that will be leasing out shared space to different research companies. But the reason why I love this account and why I took it on is because it's the fir world's first lead and well commercial building. So the windows are very eco, like eco driven and super social responsible. Like the windows are use artificial intelligence to automatically tint so that, you know, the sunlight is coming in, but it's using less resources and people awesome. are being more productive because it has that unobstructed view. And it's, um, it's, it's amazing. They're, they're, um, they are their TOD, which is, you know, they're really strategically located close to transit, um, different transit um, opportunities. Like I think it's the 30th street station in Philadelphia where it, they encourage, you know, ride share and different, like less, you know, using less resources again. And then the air quality is better. Um, everything all around there's different. The steels, they use cooling steel beams, which is really cool. Grass on all the roofs, which, you know, obviously that um, keeps the heat in. And then in the summertime, it keeps it really cool. So the building in itself is really cool. And that's university place. I thought you would appreciate that being conscious. So the fact, awesome. you know, working, you know, working with conscious clients and conscious people in general, really is who I want to help because that's really what's going to make the world a better place. Right. Well, definitely, definitely is. And, and so do you, who do you primarily work with? So I, I, I mean, I work with really um, primarily, I, I do with some professional based uh, accounts. I work with a dentist, but his approach is a little bit holistic and he has, you know, the best quality, um, uh, products and machinery and everything. So those type of clients and definitely conscious clients, definitely conscious soulpreneurs is primarily who I work with. I love the coaches. Um, the coaches are the ones I help on a, um, a different level, like that content level and creating. I work with a great videographer, Ben Hale, who really helps bring their visions to life as well and photography and whatnot. So I help them create their, you know, what their vision, bring them, bring it to life basically based on whatever their goals are and their campaigns, because they're the ones again, who are going to make the difference. For example, I worked with a soul coach. She has, um, you know, a portal soul, a soul space portal where she offers meditations and different things. So I've helped her um, strategically organize a membership, a paid membership group where people could enter and then just get full access to her. Um, and, and again, that in my mind is really helping spread and create more catalysts and more conscious type of people. Um, you know, again, the building that I'm working with super conscious, they're the ones that I'm creating content for as well. Those are the ones I feel are going to make, you know, community impact and social impacts. Um, and I oppose, I do have a realtor who, you know, is a local woman and I know she's a really community powerhouse and has a 
big voice. So those type of people, definitely community catalysts and people who are passionate about making a difference and a positive impact on the world are the ones that I'm the most passionate about helping and to amplify their message. What in your mind is the biggest difference between, you know, just regular content creation and conscious create content creation? Like what's, what is that big difference and, and why is it so beneficial? So conscious content creation is, in my mind, taking a step back and evaluating and mapping out where you want to be based on what your goal is. So let's say you have a program or a campaign or a course that's about to launch and you're three months in advance. Consciously, a conscious content approach would be how could we map this out to really get the full maximum amount of impact from your listeners and audience? So, you know, let's start first with some meditation and meditation is very important to me because you're going to be on, you know, you're going to be presenting yourself and expressing yourself on social media and in the media in general, who do you want to be, you know, who could, who do you envision yourself as, who do you want to be portrayed as offline and online? Because it's super, super important to be who you are online as the same person as you are offline. You know, you don't want to be a hoax and you don't want to be hypocritical. And that is the first step, you know. So I lead usually clients through an authenticity meditation where we reflect on the past, we reflect on the present, and then we kind of envision the future. And that future person is really who you are based on the past and the present, you know, and we envision that. And from there, you know, we also do some different creative type of meditations and whatnot. And then how do we attract, you know, your ideal audience? Let's talk about visuals. Let's talk about colors. Let's talk about, you know, the photos, the still photography that's going to get you there. Let's talk about the videography that's going to get you there. The 60 second reels, the um, different ads, if you want to do paid ad campaigns and how are we going to, you know, find your ideal avatar. Let's identify them first and then let's map that out. I give them different templates to identify their ideal avatar, who they ideally want in their community and to help build their community. And you know what different influencers, what different uh, communities and groups that they want to be networking with, because that's very important when it comes to attracting. I believe in that attraction method, um, and I believe in expressing yourself truly, authentically as you are, and attracting that. I always like to help them envision like a fire, a flame, and people circling around that flame, and then just keep on growing and growing, and what that flame would look like, and what those people would look like, and what the people cheering you on would look like. So that helps us kind of get to what type of community you would want to build and evolve from. And with that, you know, the, the other part to attraction method is where are your ideal avatars hanging out? You know, where are they hanging out? How are we going to attract them based on where they're hanging out? And then, you know, the, the last, the, the, another part of it is, you know, how are you going to give through your content without giving too much, you know, because giving is very important when it comes to, um, you know, building a brand, you know, but you don't want to give too much where you're exhausted and energetically drained. So that's where we take a little bit of a, a conscious approach where how could you collaborate with other communities and bring other communities into your, your community um, for example, I do a weekly tune in Tuesday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. That is my way of giving to my community. I feature either a mindfulness guest expert or a marketing guest expert. And that's my way of, of giving to my community because they're learning. And, and on my end, it's my edutational, my edutaining and my educational type of content that I provide my audience. So and also, again, it's that opportunity to collaborate and, again, bring in another um, community because that person, their community may not know me, but if they follow that person and they trust that person, then they'll trust me because that person trusts me. You know what I mean? So that's where that collaboration comes in. And then, again, interacting, you know, how could you consciously interact with people without just, you know, wanting something in return? Let's build again. And that comes down to, you know, interacting in a, in a very authentic way. Let's not send automated messages and automate it. You know, it, it's let's send a voice message and let's, you know, hey, I love what you're doing. Would love to hop on a call. If you're interested, let me know. Very, very, very 
you know, very kind of like how you and I had met. It's very authentic. You know, I genuinely want to hear about what you do. I may not be able to help you. I'm not here to sell you, but you know, in the end, maybe I may be able to provide you something and you may be able to provide me something. So I'm building relationships and that's where the consciousness part comes into, you know, you're not going to hop on social media and build 10,000 followers and have millions of sales. It's going to take time. And that's the conscious, you know, and, and I liked, again, Referencing back to your friend, Phil Johnson, I loved how he used that s'mores, not the s'mores, but the marshmallow experiment when the kids, you know, um, you know, they put two marshmallows in front of kids and then one marshmallow. And they said, you could have the one marshmallow right away. But if you wait 30 days, you could have the two marshmallows. And then the ones they did a post study, the ones that weighed it, the 30 days for the two marshmallows. They were the ones that were more likely and more successful in life. So that patience, that game of knowing that it won't happen overnight and that you may fall and fail, but it's not failures. They're just lessons that you're learning along the way that will help you evolve and grow from. That's the important, you know, part of the journey and, and the conscious part of the journey. And then again, you know, I, I, this is my magic formula that I'm going through, by the way. So it's meditate, attract, give, interact, and consistency. And this is a formula that I've developed for my coaches and people who wanted to know how I was doing it and what I was doing, basically. And the consistency part, again, is I'm very big into consistency, consistency and systems. Everything that I set up are systems so that it flows, everything so that I don't have to be glued to it or overwhelmed because sometimes expressing yourself on social media could be overwhelming and you know what you're trying to maintain a business and grow your brand but how could you do all of this well it, this is a full-time job you know what i mean so there's it it's is. important to create systems. yeah it is and it's important to create templates and systems and folders and organize yourself you know i have folders in my phone for everything in my album like pictures you know i have my my personal brand photos just and batching is a big part of it i batch photos I batch videos and then this way it's just accessible at my hands for whatever I'm feeling organically at a certain moment on posting. And you know, another thing is just, it, it's important not to focus too much on being too professional or too stiff or too, you know, that balance of, you know, really quality photos and imageries and imagery and content balanced with that personable real life type of this is me, you know, unfiltered kind of content. Right. And that's why I love Instagram the most for me personally, um, because that's where I could express both of those in balance. Yeah. I, I feel like it, I, I've been doing working in, in branding and stuff for a long time. And so social media has changed a lot in the last 10, it used to be, I could do all of it myself, all, all of the <laughs> social media platforms running the ads on them. I could do it all myself. I didn't need didn't need a team knowing what what was happening yeah um and everybody expected a lot more you know professional. and now people are people are realizing it you can't do professional level by yourself on all channels at all at all times and people are much more interested in connecting with the actual you like the real the real mm -hmm. you and so that that has been a has been an interesting shift, which I think is good, but it's been interesting. Watch it to change now. You know, it takes <laughs> it takes a specialist on each platform to to handle you know what's going on. Almost if you're if you want to be like really on top of everything, it's it is a lot of work. It's a full time job to to be able to it do really everything. Is. Sprout Social, I just kind of dove into Sprout Social. That's one tool that I'm finding super beneficial. It is a little bit pricey. Uh, I believe it's 99 a month, but then you could upgrade uh, to 169 a month. But for me, it's super beneficial because, and it's worth it. I mean, you have to think about your return on your investment. What do you have to sell or what do you have to do just to get that return on your investment? And for me, it's worth it. And at the end of the day, it's really, I like how it's laid out. It's clean and it allows me to post a different, the only thing it doesn't allow you to post are reels and stories. But other than that, it's great to, to do everything. It does Google my business. It does Snapchat, um, Instagram, Facebook. I don't think it does TikTok quite yet. There is one that does TikTok. But there I'm not is sure. Tic that TikTok's been holding out. They've been keeping it pretty locked down for a while. I so know. That, that That's why I was like, 
I don't know if it's legit. That's why I don't give that one out. <laughs> it's, until there's a couple of them, I'd, I'd say it might be a little sketchy uh, <laughs> trying to use them right now. For that. Yeah, because some of them, you know how it goes, those third party, um, those third party ones, you never really could trust whether or not they are really, you know, in conjunction with it. But yeah. And I, yeah. I, I won't give the tool then because I recommend it to anyone and then get screwed in the end. But <laughs> yeah, nobody, I did look into it. We, we don't want to be uh, held liable of anybody at account getting banned by, by TikTok yeah. from using it. Uh, yeah, good times experimenting with those. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've done that too. I've got banned a couple of times. <laughs> But I have to do that for my own to see if it's legit for my clients, you know? Right. It's important. Yeah, we used to, we actually used to run a test account specifically for that. So we could go test, test a system and see if it was legit. If it didn't get banned in a couple months, we'd say, okay, we can, <laughs> you can use this. Our right. clients, you can, you can use it. We've tested it. We're, here's the account. It's still operating, hasn't been banned. So it's definitely, definitely an interesting space if you want to test those out uh so hey this is this is a great work that you're doing you're you're helping people be more conscious with their content which i think people need more <laughs> be a lot a lot of people could could use this um so where's the best way what's the best way to get a hold of you talk to you learn more about what you're doing and and potentially work with you so yeah, so I'm most active on Instagram just because that's the platform I relate most to. You know, it's my business card. It's again, where I could file my highlights. I love how it's laid out. I feel like that is our storefront our for, you know, when people mm. first come on where they can learn more about us. So that's kind of where I am the most active if people wanted to follow me. And that's at Robin Sierra, R-O-B-I-N-S as in Sam, C as in cat, I-A-R-R-A. And other than that, my website is Robin Skiera and my email is Robin at creativemindedmarketing.com. So, but really I just give my cell phone out, like just call me. <laughs> my cell phone number is 609-846-8115. And just give me a shout and be like, hey, I heard you on the, you know, Peter, Peterman Conscious Podcast and loves what you have said and want to chat and i'll we'll, we'll chat i love 20 minute calls i love getting to know people seeing where they're at and connecting so just Maybe. give me a call or a text <laughs> perfect well that, you make it very easy for anyone to get a hold of you that, that way <laughs> i know right phone, I'm phone probably, email and social. I mean, I'm not that popular, so. yeah i'm not that popular so <laughs> hopefully maybe one day i won't be giving out my number <laughs> That's when you, that's when you get the personal number and then the number yeah. that you've been giving out for years and years is, is the public the one. Burner phone. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, this has been <laughs> great chatting with you and, and learning more about what you're doing and, and how you're able to do conscious content. And uh, yeah, definitely anybody that's wanting to do this should be talking to you. Uh, and yeah, I think it's so important. I mean, even going into the future, you know, even if it's not me, it's just so important to really evaluate that like, like Seth Godin, I just posted a, a, a quote from him the other day, content marketing is the only marketing really that exists. And that just goes for anything. It's not even social media, but it's the content that you're creating and putting into your campaign is really the, it's important. That's the, the, really mm -hmm. the thing that's going to make you or break you, you know? So anybody who's creating content, if you're creating content and putting the time into it, why not make it effective and conscious? So, you know, and right. don't, I mean, don't, I mean, sense. it's so, there's so many, yeah. And there's so many influencers and there's so many different people that are great, which is inspiration for me, but to copy them and do the same thing is like, blah, be your own person, you know, you, and if you don't know who you are, then that's where we dive in. And that's important. You know, it all right. goes hand in hand and and it's, it's a very content marketing is the future. It's right now. And it is the future. It's going to evolve even more so. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think that's a really good point. It's, it always has been the, the marketing. We, we just get distracted by a new shiny platform and then, yeah. and then we all realize it's still just the content. So it's true. Yeah. It's so true. Awesome. Yeah. And I don't think, like, I don't think that it's something that people should be overwhelmed by. Cause I feel like that's something that holds people back 
or, you know, they're just not, they don't want to be on social or they're not, or they don't want to get consumed or they don't want to be energetically drained. And that's all, you know, understandable and rightfully so, but there's ways, just know that there's ways to be present online and not get consumed. I'm a very active person. I'm very active in my kids' lives. I do not get consumed by my phone, believe it or not. And, you know, I don't engage that much because when Instagram I Instagram hasn't I get swallowed you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's not something to be overwhelmed because as long as you create systems and routine, it just becomes like clockwork and, and it is a part of your brand. I mean, it's important to make it a part of your brand and marketing. Right. Absolutely. Just like Absolutely. It, yeah, just like it is your sales pitch, you know? So. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, thanks for being on the show, Robin. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I'm excited. And we'll connect again because you'll be on my tune in Tuesday. Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. Very good. Awesome. And thank you, everybody. Thank you.